Welcome to another edition of Warbird Wednesday. My name is Fred Bell. I am the vice chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum. Kevin, I have to tell myself that because sometimes I forget with my brain. I don't know what you are doing with this, my jacundity assistant. This is this thing I walked out. You know, we don't see these until we actually shoot the drink and the hat. This one's actually kind of gross. It looks gross. Anyways, I'm going to whip off my brain case there. Some people will say I have no brain and toss my brain off Kevin, camera to the Kevin. So today we're talking about the consolidated, the PB2Y, the Coronado. Now, this is not a Coronado, and this model looks like it came out of, we have an identification case where you identify various shapes this is not a Coronado, but I'm not sure what this is, but it's going to fill my hands today. Geometry on it, it's fairly close. Now, Consolidated did a lot of work in the flying boat area. You know, we know about the Catalina. The PB2Y Coronado is a line of uh, transport patrol light attack flying boats. You know, they built the Catalina, the Coronado, you could argue was a more complex design. Now, an interesting thing, Kevin, the uh, Coronado cost $300,000 in early 1940 money. That was three times the cost of a, uh, a PBY Catalina. So think about that. Now that cost, also limited production. There were only 217 of them built. We talked about that the major powers, all of them were covering large expanses of ocean. They wanted to do it with these flying boats, both from a transport basis and this maritime patrol and attack because the, they just didn't need the runways. We've talked about that. They could refuel them and they, they were just a, you know, we've heard the term used before, they're a force multiplier. They're a force multiplier. Remember, land-based aircraft at this time did not have tremendous range at, let's say, the late 1930s, early 1940s. And it wasn't until we really were dealing with deep strike airplanes like uh, B-17s, B-24s, long-range bombardment, B-29s that the fighter aircraft actually caught up and, and started getting more range. But in the early in the war, these things were important. They were important as transport. They were important as air ambulances, moving people. They also could, especially in the Pacific, get out and deliver a little, <clears throat> what would you say, Kevin, a knock on the door to let these Japanese island garrisons, Wake Island, some of these really far out garrisons know that, hey, the Americans are out here and, and we're coming for you. And in the right operator, if it was a submarine on a maritime patrol basis or torpedoes, uh, or not so much bombs because they just weren't fast enough, but if they were against like thin skinned cargo ships with bombs, remember a near miss could crack the hull and sink the ship. The, uh, these things were, were pretty dangerous. Uh, there were, as I said, 217 of them built. They had 1830 radial engines on them, various dashes. And Greg in the edit can show up maybe, Greg, the um, different variances of 1830 motors. Uh, a lot of these were built, the later variants were built with an 1830-92 engine. Um, but they were never... With 1830 engine, now remember, that's what's on the C-47 as an example. Very common engine, but they weren't particularly fast. It wasn't an overpowered engine like a 2600 or a 2800, which went on a lot of the medium bombers, and then the 2800 radial went on a lot of fighters. 
The uh, the RAF also got these aircraft, and they served as the again transport and hospital uh, planes. Primarily, that was because of the limited range. This aircraft had give or take, and this is with loadout and fuel and everything out else, probably a thousand miles, had an 1800 mile range. The PBY Catalina had a much longer range, so it was much better for reconnaissance. It could loiter, or what they call loiter. So again, that's why the IRAF almost used all of these as transports and air ambulances. So this is one of these aircraft that was versatile, but also one of the uh, just uh, what I want to say is unsung heroes. And I'm going to talk about how little notice these got towards the end of my uh, video here. But the folks that I want to honor them, and I put this down, is unsung heroes, the people that didn't get recognition. And that, you know, this video will air... Um, the day before December 7th, which plunged the United States into war, and ultimately we came out of the war as one of the superpowers. The rest is history, and we're not a history channel, so that's not what we're doing here. But um, a couple of things. One, uh, before uh, actually all those on December 7th, think about the fact that many of them that were trapped in those ships never knew why they were trapped in the ships. They only knew. They never made it out. They never saw the light of day again. They were they, A lot of those uh, battleships capsized or suffered catastrophic explosions. Many of them died instantly. But if you go to the Pacific Cemetery uh, or you go to the – I encourage you, if you get a chance, to go to Pearl Harbor and actually see it. Um, you'll realize that the enormity of the scale of that, and then when you look at that as World War, on a World War basis, all the people that got the ammunition there, that dealt with the wounded, that picked up the dead on the field, the equipment, everything, all of these people made that possible, the supply chain, to get to the tip of the spear, right, which is the combat, the either combat marine or infantrymen or sailor or airmen, wherever, but there's an entire supply chain behind them. And this particular aircraft, the Coronado, is part of that supply chain. It was not necessarily a combat aircraft. So to all those folks that made sure that there were bullets, uh, butter, and guns, I'll use it that way, in the right people's hands, I salute you. And I'm going to do that today with... Dr. Enough, the original energy booster. I, you know, doing this video, I need an energy booster. Rich in vitamins. Enough is enough. It's right on their uh, their label. Where the heck did you get this one? Um, okay, it does have a California cash refund thing, 180 calories, so it's not too bad. It doesn't look too old. It's not like where I could throw it and it would stick to my hand like the, la the one last week it has a twist off cup i must twist off the top kevin all right a little bit of a fizz so it has has a little fizz there um this has kind of like a um minty aroma i'm becoming a real soda connoisseur after three years That's really nice. Okay. Greg's going to be very upset. We're going to get hate, hate mail. Greg does the edits, and now Kevin does the actual physical shoot. And, um, oh, he's going to be upset that you're not poisoning me. I'm going to take the mandatory second step. But it is, the, it is December. Goodwill among men. Go with that, Kevin. Use that excuse. You're not trying to bring in bad vibes. Second sip. That's actually, that's pretty good. It's kind of like a, like a ginger ale type thing. All right, so we're done with that. The, um, to show you 
how little combat this air, airplane saw. It had five confirmed aircraft kills in its entire career over World War II. So, and I'll tell you why over World War II, but let's just say it was not a, uh, again, in the thick of combat. They kept it out of combat. They knew uh, what it was good for, and they kept it in its niche. Sadly, in 1946, the entire fleet was scrapped, all of them. There are some that were actually sunk in the Pacific and are wrecks, and if Greg can pick up maybe some of that footage in the edit, that'd be great. But uh, so there are there were some combat losses. There were some that were scuttled, but what was ever left of the fleet that was operational was completely scrapped in 1946. Now there is one survivor, and that is at the Navy Museum. Now it does have. We talk about livery, which is the paint job or the history on the airplane. This was the aircraft that uh, delivered Admiral Nimitz to Tokyo Harbor uh, for the surrender of Japan. So it, this one was definitely a historic aircraft. It went and was preserved by the Navy Museum, and I don't know how that happened, but obviously somebody felt that that aircraft should survive because that's fairly historically significant activity. So if you ever get to Pensacola, the Navy Museum has a fantastic museum down there. You should go see it. But at the end of the day, that's it. There are no survivors. And uh, again, we're as we go through these, and this is going to show you how this technology went away, is these aircraft were all scrapped. And most of the types are gone. There are a few PBYs surviving, uh, and of course, Martin Mars and some other, which is where we are going to do the Martin Mars. But uh, for the most part, these aircraft went away. Now, if you, it's before Christmas, and if you wish to refight the Monopoly game in World War II, you know, this would be fun to do this. I mean, it's got Atlantic convoys on it and the home front. Go ahead and click on that link, and Jason will send you one of these. You can gift wrap it and give it to somebody you love, a World War II Monopoly game. Also, I'm standing in the Pacific hangar. We cannot do this without your donations. There's a link in the video for donations. This all works on moolah and so if you want to give us a donation click on that link and we would uh, gladly accept it we appreciate it if you're teaching the kids at home remember there are teachers links for our teachers guides also attached to this video if you came across us on youtube we would love to get a uh, subscription from you very much appreciate a subscription give us a comment if you think uh even if you think the hat's too much the soda's too much but I will tell you, if you got to this point of the video, if you like one take Warbird videos, and we do one cut at this, that's it, uh, we're your place. We'd ask that you uh, forward this to your friends who also might like this. We do the aircraft without a ton of production. And lastly, if you're on Facebook, please give us a, a like and a comment. We will respond to you. My name is Fred Bell. I am the vice chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum, I'm sure, and I will see you again. Thanks for watching. Three, two, one, end of that. Team with a go. Be the perfect